Hi guys, my name is Itisha and today in this video we are going to discuss one of the most commonly used concept in Swift UI that you would be required to implement on a day-to-day -day basis and that is list. In Swift UI, a list is a container view that displays a collection of data in a vertically stacked format. So it is typically used to display a large collection of data and also provides scrolling by default whenever the number of rows exceeds the length of the screen. In this video, we are going to cover everything there is to know about Swift UI list, like how to build a Swift UI list, how to create a list from a collection of data, how to use for each with list, how to add sections and much, much more. So let's jump onto Xcode and see it in action. To build a Swift UI list, we simply have to use a built-in component called as list and stack the views that we want to display inside it. Let's say we want to display some text, a button and a labeled content. So for that, we can create all these views inside our list. Let's say the first one says account. Then there is another text which says privacy. We also have a button and it says invite a friend and then we have a labeled content okay which says app version so typically you would see something like this in the setting section of a social media app and you can see on the right this is how the list is shown so in ios by default the list is displayed like this where each row is separated by this separator line however Swift UI provides platform specific styling. So in Mac OS, you would see the way a list is displayed would be something different. So we'll talk about that later when we'll discuss about uh, list styling in further section of this video. Now, typically you would be required to create a list dynamically from a collection of data. Let's take an example. Let's say we are building a workout app and for that we want to show the exercises in a list format. Let's see how we can do that. We first require a collection. Let's say it's an array apps exercises and it is a array of all the apps exercises that are there that we want to show now in order to display it we simply have to pass it like this and let's call each of the element as exercise and we'll show it as a text okay but we are seeing an error over here which says that the initializer requires that the string conform to identifiable why we are seeing such an error is Whenever we create a dynamic list, Swift UI needs a way to uniquely identify each item in the collection, which it is not able to do so right now. So there are majorly two approaches to resolve this issue. The first approach is to use a unique ID parameter of the type key path and pass it to the list. Now this value could be a unique property that you can define for each of the element in the collection. Otherwise, a simple approach is to use the hash of each of the element in the collection by passing this value as self. Now you can see that the error would be gone and on our right we can see the list. Okay, this is the first approach. Now let's move on to the second approach which is most popularly used. So in this approach we create a separate model which will define the structure of the element that this apps exercises array is going to hold and we are going to confirm that particular model to the identifiable protocol. Let me show you what I'm trying to say. So we do not need this in the second approach. Rather, we create a model and let's call it exercise and confirm it to the identifiable protocol. Since it is conforming to identifiable, we also need to create a unique property ID. Now let's give it a value of UUID. Then we are going to have these exercises in the array, which are of type string. So let's create a variable for it and call it name which is going to be of type string. Now, instead of having the elements like this, we are going to have each element of the type exercise, which will have a property called name and ID is implied. Okay. In this case, we can simply access the name by, sim by writing exercise dot name. So you can see we are getting the same result as previously, because in this case, Swift UI automatically use this ID property to uniquely identify each element. If you have been following with me and enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because it motivates me to make more such content. So let's move on. Now for displaying a collection of data, we can also use for each to loop over each item in the collection. Now you might be wondering why is this approach even required? 
So uh, let me give you a scenario, then you would be able to understand it better. Let's say uh, we want to display multiple collections within the same list or along with the collection, we also display some Swift UI view like a button or a text. How would we be able to do so? So in order to fulfill this requirement, we have to make use of for each to iterate over the collections separately that we are going to have inside the list. Let's extend this particular example that we have. Now, instead of just abs exercises, we also have another category, say legs exercises. And along with that, we also want to have two buttons inside the list, one for adding a new legs exercise and one for removing the latest one that was created. So uh, we'll have to create a state variable for that. The reason behind that is uh, since this legs exercises array is going to be modified by those buttons. So we are making it a state variable. Let's make it private and let's call it legs exercises. Again, it is going to have element which are going to be of type exercise. One is lunges and other one is squat. So uh, let me comment this out. So how we are going to create the list in this case is we are going to use for each now. And first one would be used to iterate over the app exercises collection. And we can call this as exercise and we'll display it as a text like we were doing it earlier. And then we have another one for this legs exercise and we can display it in the same manner. Okay, we also forget to access the name property. Now, along with that, we are going to have two buttons. First one says add a, add new exercise. It is going to append a new exercise to the legs exercise array. So we'll write append. So this new element should be of type exercise. So we will give the name as calf phrases. Then let's create another button and call it remove exercise. And this is going to remove the latest leg exercises that we have added in the array. Though this is not the right approach because we might have an empty array, but this is just for an example that I'm showing you. So we'll get the count of it and remove the latest one that got created. Okay, so you can see on the right, we are first getting the abs exercises, then we are getting the legs exercises, and then we have two buttons. So let's uh, try to add a new exercise. So if we click on it, you can see car phrases is added. If I click on remove, the latest one is removed. If I click it another time, squat is also removed. So this is how it is going to work. So you can see how easily we could display multiple collections inside our list. Now, if we were building an actual app, you would want that each of the exercise category that we have inside the list should be shown distinctively to the user that is coming to our app. Like there should be a separate section which says abs exercises and another one which says legs exercise. Now, uh, in Swift UI with list, we can do so. And we also have the option to add a header and a footer to each of the section. Let's see how we can do that. Uh, let's remove these buttons from here. We can uh, simply use section and inside this section, we can put these for each. And I'll show you how you can uh, put the header as well as a footer. So after this section is defined, what we have to do is put the header. So in this header, you can give a text or anything else that you want. So right now, let's give the header as abs exercises. You can also style it just like how you style any Swift UI view. So let's give it a font weight of bold. And also we'll change the foreground style to say blue. Similarly, we would do so for the other section that we have. And this one is going to be named as legs exercise. Let me also show you how you can put a footer. So for that, you simply have to write footer and inside it, let's give a text. Since we know leg days are not easy, so we'll put a footer as push hard and don't skip leg day okay now on the right you can see how beautifully we have divided the list into multiple section and this is also looking better in terms of ux as well now let's discuss how we can style a swift ui list 
what you are seeing right now is the default style of a list in iOS but we can modify the appearance of it using the list style modifier. So in iOS there are primarily five type of styles that we can apply majorly grouped, inset, inset grouped, plain and sidebar. If you do not specify anything then it is taken as automatic and it, this automatic style varies across platforms. For example, in iOS, this automatic is same as inset group. Now let's try to implement some other style and see what happens. Let's try to implement this inset one. So you can see the appearance would vary. Now instead, if you have say group, then the appearance is completely different. So according to your requirement, you can uh, have the list style. Now there are some other list styles as well, but they are available for other platform and not for iOS. In iOS, there are majorly these five. Okay, so far so good. Now there is very one common use case that you would encounter during development. And that is say you have a list and you would be required to use each list item for navigation. So in Swift UI, a list can display a static content like this that you have. Also, it can display a dynamic content like navigational link that takes the user to another view. So to do so, what you have to do is you have to use navigation stack and wrap your list inside this navigation stack. If you don't know much about navigation stack, I have made a separate video on that. You can refer to it. The link of it will be given in the description and also at the top. Okay. Now to make each of the list row clickable, what you have to use is a navigation link. And we will pass the exercise dot name. And then inside it, we have to write to which view we want to take the user to. So we'll take the user to a view which shows a text and uh, let's pass the exercise.name itself over here and also give it a font of large title. So you can see we have made all of these list items clickable and if I click on it, I'm taking to another view. I can come back and go to some other view as well. So this is how you can use list for navigation. One great feature that list in SwiftUI supports is selection. So you can let your user select a single as well as multiple rows in your list. So in order to do so, we have to make use of another list initializer with a selection parameter. This selection parameter is binding to a state variable, which is going to hold uh, a unique identifier of each of the selected row. Now for this particular example, we'll make use of the ID property that can uniquely identify each of the selected row by the user. Let's see first how we can implement single selection. So for that, we'll create a state variable. Let's call it single selection. And since it is going to hold the ID, which is equal to UUID, so we'll specify its type as UUID and initialize it to nil. Now we have to bind this to this selection and we'll be using dollar sign for it. Now let's see if we can select uh, single rows in our list or not. So you can see we can easily do so. Now it's up to you as per your requirement, you can perform a task when the user select a particular row. Okay, so the next thing is to allow multiple selection. So for that, we'll have to first create a state variable just like how we have done for single selection. But this time it is going to hold multiple UUIDs. So we'll call it multiple selection. And since it is going to have unique elements, because then only we can delete the selected rows by the user, we'll make it as a set instead. And each item is going to be of type UUID and initialize it to an empty set. Then instead of single selection, we'll pass the multiple selection over here and we'll be using the Swift UI edit button to toggle the edit mode. So we have to first wrap this inside a navigation stack. We'll also give it a navigation title to make it look better and call it exercises. And then we'll use the toolbar to use this edit button. If you don't know much about this edit button, I'll drop its Apple documentation link in the description box down below. You can refer to that. Okay, so you can see here now there is a edit button. If I click on it, then it is giving me the option to select multiple rows at once. Okay. Uh, now we have the flexibility to perform a certain task. Let's say we want to delete the rows that are selected by the user. 
we are going to have a if condition which says that if this multiple selection set is not empty then in that case we are going to show a button to the user which will say remove selected exercises and this will remove the selected exercises by the user from this abs exercises array so we'll use remove all and within this it will, it will uh, delete the element that are stored in this multiple selection based on its id so we will write this multiple selection dot contains element dot id okay uh, one key thing to note in here is since we are going to remove the element we also have to make this abs exercises a state variable then only we can modify it okay now let's see if it is working fine if i click on edit okay then i select these then you can see let me expand this you can see this remove selected exercise button is appearing and if i click on it those exercises have been removed if i do it again those exercises are removed and if i click on done only one exercise is remaining in our list similarly you can perform any other action as well as per your requirement whenever the user select a single or a multiple row so now if you have used linkedin whatsapp etc what you would observe is a swipe to delete action so whenever you swipe the chat there is a delete action that appears and if you click on it that particular chat is removed so in that particular scenario the chat is nothing but a list so we can also implement that swipe to delete action in our list let me quickly show you how you can do that and it's pretty simple you simply have to use the on delete modifier for that so here we will write this on delete modifier and it takes in a parameter of form which is nothing but a closure uh, which takes in a parameter called index set which specifies the position of the element that has been swiped by the user and then we can uh, perform a particular task so let's say we want to remove it that is we want to give the delete action so we'll call this apps exercises use this remove at offset and this will be passed as the index set so now if you see if i'm swiping there is a delete action that we can perform if i click on it this particular uh, row from our list is removed otherwise if i completely swipe it then it is automatically removed similar to that we also have the option to reorder the list items instead of this on delete we are going to use the on move modifier and it similar to on delete it takes in a perform parameter now the closure accepts two parameter one is indices and the other one is new offset this indices is the position of the element that is uh, picked by the user for example this one and new offset is the position where this current element has been placed what we are going to use again is our apps exercise use move and from offset we have to pass this indices and to offset we have to pass this new offset okay so let me quickly run it and see it in action now if i try to shift this jumping jack say on the first row then i can easily do it you can similarly do it for other rows as well now one key thing to note about swift ui list is the content that is there inside the list is loaded lazily meaning only the currently visible cells are loaded into the memory resulting in reduced memory usage so that's why it is always advisable to use a list whenever you have a large collection of data that you want to display in a vertically stacked format so that's majorly it about this video if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button and also share it with other ios developers out there thanks for watching